Whether it's graduating from college after many long semesters of study, launching a successful business website after many long months of work, or completing a challenging physical challenge like a marathon, we often derive our greatest sense of accomplishment from overcoming hardship. To finish a hard but worthwhile task, you need a lot of toughness. People think that being tough means having a lot of confidence, being strong, and showing off. But none of those things are really tough. The author Steve Magnus looked into the science of toughness and found that the traditional toughness maxims and the science of toughness are very different. For starters, traditional toughness says to act confident. But except reality is what the science of toughness says. When the U.S. Army looked at the results of their survival training courses, they found that the soldiers who had doubts and thought the training would be hard did much better than the soldiers who thought it would be easy. Steve Magnus was once told by a wise and experienced military friend, an ounce of doubt keeps me sharp. Your ability to keep going and be tough during the task depends a lot on what you thought it would be like. If you don't give the task enough thought, you'll panic when it turns out to be harder than you thought. The best way to stay strong is to assume that nothing will go as smoothly or as quickly as you want it to. However, with enough time and effort, you can do more than most people think is possible. In other words, mix pessimism about the short term with optimism about the long term. Ignore the pain and keep going, says the traditional way to be tough. Accept the pain, but keep your cool, says the science of toughness. Every difficult and worthwhile thing to do comes with a lot of pain. The amygdala, a small part of the brain that scientists call the body's alarm system, is turned on when we feel pain. When someone is burned out, their amygdala is overactive and they can't calm down. To avoid getting burned out and giving up, we need to understand our internal alarms, turn them off quickly, and make smart decisions. It's like getting a warning when our gas tank is getting low. The alarm tells us important things that we should act on, but we don't need it to keep going if we have enough gas to get to the next gas station. Here is a three-step plan that will reliably return your amygdala to its normal state and help you keep your cool in stressful situations. One, take a step back and explain. I zoom out and look at myself from a distance when I'm working and think, you getting frustrated. One way to control our emotions is to explain stressful situations to ourselves in the third person. In one study, kids who talked about themselves in the third person while doing a frustrating task were 30% better at controlling their feelings and staying on task. 2. Reevaluate. When we take a test, we can see our nerves as a sign that we aren't ready, or we can see them as a sign that the test is important and that our bodies are giving us more energy to focus. When we reevaluate, we find ways that being uncomfortable is good for us. The more we reevaluate, the more likely we are to deal with discomfort in a productive way, rather than running away or ignoring it. 3. Reassure. Experienced meditators are so good at calming down after something stressful because they've spent thousands of hours watching thoughts and feelings come and go and know that everything is temporary. We don't have to meditate for thousands of hours to know that pain is a temporary feeling that goes up and down. When we feel bad, we can tell ourselves, this too shall pass, and get back to a calm state. Forget about your emotional needs and just do the work, says traditional toughness. If you meet your psychological needs, you will work harder than you ever have, says the science of toughness. People have three psychological needs, autonomy, competency, and belonging. If you can give yourself a sense of independence, competence, and belonging while doing something hard, you will have a much better chance of finishing it. Make yourself feel independent by recognizing that you always have a choice. Even if someone tells you what to do, you can decide how to think about it or not do it and deal with the results. Feeling like you're making progress all the time will give you a sense of competence. Think about the work you've done in the past few days that got you where you are now. Then, think about one small thing you can do in the next five seconds to keep moving forward. For a runner in the middle of a marathon, that means thinking about the miles he already run and then doing his best with the next few steps. Remember the people or mission you are fighting for to give yourself a sense of belonging. 
During a hard battle, a soldier keeps his mind strong by fighting for the soldiers next to him. We've reached the end of the video. Thank you for staying with me and watching until the end. If you want to say something or share a thought, please do so in the comments section down below. Lastly, don't forget to like this video and share it with your family and friends.